Hey guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro, and today, as always, I've got an interesting topic for you guys. For those of you that might not be familiar, I will run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com. And of course, this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. So anyhow, on to the topic. So let's say you find a classic Mead LX200, or maybe you have one knocking around the garage that you haven't used in years and you take it out. There's one thing that you really, really should do before you even plug the thing in and turn it on. What's that, you might ask? Well, let's get out to the workbench and I'll tell you a little bit of uh, the, you know, potential issues that the electronics, you know, kind of suffer with uh, these guys and uh, what you should really do to, you know, kind of, you know, fix that. Alrighty guys, so overall the electronics and the LX200 classics do suffer one big issue. They use a capacitors uh, and actually like pretty much all the boards in the telescope that over time they just kind of degrade and um, from what I understand, I'm not like a, you know, like an electrical engineer, but from what I understand from reading about it, basically me chose to use a 12 volt capacitor and they ran the scopes at 18 volts. So the capacitor was just never really designed to run at that voltage in the first place. So there's a number of capacitors that you got to replace uh, in all the boards to really alleviate the issue. But there's one that you really have to do uh, before you really turn the telescope on. And here's, let me show you why. So basically, the hand controller for the Mead LX200 looks like this guy here. Um, and basically, uh, you know, it's screwed together. Voila! <laughs> um, yeah, so obviously I'm screwed. But anyway, if you look into here, right, the capacitor that I'm talking about that, you know, can fail is, you know, right in there. Right where my pinky is there. It's one of those uh, yellow-orange type of deals. And as you can see in there, hopefully, there is a ribbon that connects, you know, the motherboard to like, I think the hand controller or the screen or something like that. So what happens is if that capacitor blows, which you never know when it's going to happen. I mean, it could be like, you know, if the scope hasn't been ran in a while, it could be the very first time you turn it on. What it'll do is it'll actually burn through that ribbon. Um, from what I understand, there's a guy that actually makes these available, like the ribbons, so that's really cool. I'll post the link to the Cloudy Nights thread on this, you know, that should, they'll show you all the pictures of how to do this. Um, and like, you know, which capacitors you might want to replace, but this one is crucial. Um, if any of the other capacitors blow on the scope, it's not too big of a deal. I mean, you know, it'll, it'll, you'll be out of a night of observing, right? But chances are it probably won't damage anything. This one will, uh, last I looked it up, looks like the guy that makes this ribbon and stuff, you know, costs about 50 bucks. So, you know, it's fairly expensive, uh, but that's a lot better than, you know, how it used to be before that. Because, I mean, Mead hasn't made these in forever, so you'd have to find a used one. And they're, you know, they're pretty darn hard to come by. So, anyhow, let's start taking this apart. We'll replace this capacitor. Try to turn the scope on and see what happens. Alrighty guys, so again, the controller, you know, it's the, the back plate is just held with four screws, right? That I unscrewed already because I wanted to check see if the ribbon was actually burnt out on this one, which thankfully on my controller it is not. Uh, so you unscrew those four screws, you know, you'll take this guy off. And then the next thing that you'll want to do, right, is basically unscrew this whole motherboard, which I believe is held by this screw, this screw, this screw, this screw, and then these. Actually, I think all you got to do is take off these screws, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm going to start unscrewing these, right? And, you know, just so that you're not bored out of your mind, I'll kind of tell you a story while I'm doing this. So for those of you guys that watch my channel or might know me, you know, you might be wondering, like, you know, is this Vlad's first go at this? Um, it is not. So they, I bought this packet of capacitors, right, to do... Um, by the way, this is the ones that I've used. I've used them in the past. They work just fine. I think some people recommend using like a 50 volt. Uh, I, you know, again, I'm not an electrical engineer. Th these are work fine, you know, like at this rate in here. Uh, but anyway, so <clears throat> back when I was a kid, back when I was getting into the hobby, um, I believe the very first uh, LX200 that I bought was a 10 inch. 
Um, this was like in the early 2000s, so this is back when these things were cool, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was like the current model back then. And then I upgraded to a 12 inch. I mean, that thing was massive, you know, especially coming from, you know, kind of using smaller scopes. Um, just kind of off the top of my head, uh, but that, that scope that we we're looking at earlier, that's a 10 inch as well. So it's like my first one that I had. Um, but in any case, yeah, I think I've had, I don't know, probably, um, uh, I'm trying to think like three, eight inchers, like two, 10 inchers, two, 12 inchers. So, you know, quite a few of them over the years. So I've done this a couple of times. The last time I did this was honestly a while ago. So this is kind of, you know, a little bit of trial and error. Okay. And so I took out those four screws and I'm trying to see if this will just lift off. I think this LED right here is just thick. Let's see. I'm kind of... All right, so yeah, I just got it loose. That was kind of weird. I mean, I definitely don't remember that happening. So this LED was just really stuck in there. I felt like something else was holding the board on, but I think it was just that LED. All right, so... Yeah, so this kind of lifts out like that. And the, one of the, this is one of the capacitors that we're going to be replacing here. And then, okay, so the keypad is connected to there. Okay, and I'm gonna take a pause here and see how to unhook these ribbons without breaking them, because otherwise that kind of defeat the purpose of this video, right, if I still break the ribbon. <laughs> All right, so I don't know if uh, my ribbon is just kind of uh, being stubborn and doesn't want to come out, so I'm not gonna force it. I'm just gonna do the replacement, basically, with the still connected. Uh, I did a little bit of reading, or try to do some reading, and I couldn't find, uh, you know, real quickly, like, you know, how you are supposed to remove the ribbon, so I'm just gonna leave it on. But anyway, the capacitor that we're trying to replace, the one that typically will blow, is C2, so that's like the inner capacitor there, right? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to put this piece of cardboard here just to kind of protect the ribbon, but essentially what we're trying to do is we're going to unsolder this then, this connector, and this connector, right? Um, turn on some more light here. There we go. So yeah, we're unsoldering this and this. Um, I actually, this back in the day, I actually bought this specifically to do this. I don't think I've used this since. But I've got actually a solder remover gun. I'll show that to you guys in a second. Alrighty, so check out this bad boy. So I got this back when I used to work at Fry's Electronics. All of the uh, electronic nerds <laughs> will probably recognize that store. Uh, so, uh, in any case, yeah, so, I mean, this thing is pretty simple. You cock it, right? You push this, and, uh, you know, it essentially creates, like, instant, instant suction to where you could pull out the solder. Now, if you haven't soldered, if you're not familiar with soldering, I probably would go ahead and get somebody to do this for you that's, you know, done it before. Because, I mean, you know, you, you, you know, you can mess this, like, board up itself. Alrighty, guys, so wish me luck. The solder and iron is warmed up. So I got the gun cocked right. And uh, going in for the first connector basically. So heat it up a little. Okay. I don't think I got it all the first go, so I'll heat it up a little more. Okay, I think I got most of it. Let's see the second one, heat it up. It's kind of weird. I don't remember these being so stubborn to come out. This time they're giving me, or it's giving me kind of a hard time. There we go. 
pulled right out. So there's the there's the old capacitor. Um, and then yeah, so I'm about to get to installing the new one. <clears throat> <clears throat> all right so these things you know they do have a polarity to them right so one of the posts is the positive post right and i'll say right on the capacitor and so if you look at the board i don't know if this how well it's going to show up in the video but if you look at the board uh let me get something to point with so as you can see like this side right here is uh the positive side right so that's where you want to put the positive post in so i'm going to get to doing that uh, in my case the positive post is this side so you kind of see the plus on there so let's get to it and basically you don't really got to cut this short what you really kind of want to do is kind of feed it all the way through right or as far as you want and then you could just cut the post shorter you know um after you feed it through basically All right, and anyhow, so we are in. So I got it in there. Um, you know, I uh, I didn't really take out like a lot of the solder, I guess, with that solder gun after all. So I'm really not even gonna add any more solder. I mean, this is solid in there. It's not moving anywhere. So I'm just gonna snip these off. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just assemble this thing back together and uh, go test it out, see if it works. Alrighty guys, so got the hand controller all back together, right? One thing uh, that I will kind of, you know, give you another tip with, uh, especially on older scopes, um, meads in particular for some reason. A lot of times what I'll do, right, is I'll actually take some, you know, just rubbing alcohol. And uh, I mean, don't do this with your scope like then or anything, but I'll actually go through and I'll kind of clean all of the connectors because you know they tend to get i don't know like a little bit of corrosion or something on them and i've had plenty of times to where i mean the scope will uh kind of do weird things basically um on the fork arm here so you know, I, I kind of cleaned this connector, right? But there's another one on the inside here that actually goes to the motor. So probably a good idea to hit that, right? Kind of clean that up a little bit. Clean it on the inside as well. So it's just a couple of common things besides the capacitors. Okay, so I'm gonna let this thing um, kind of dry out, like all those connectors dry out, and then uh, we'll try to fire it up. All right guys, so check this out. Success story, kind of. <laughs> so the hand controller works just fine. It's uh, controlling the scope, right? In this axis. This axis though, um, as you can see, just kind of keeps on slowing by itself. So now we get to do some more troubleshooting and see what's going on with that then. Part of the fun of restoring one of these old scopes, right? <laughs> 